From deep in space, something is approaching the Earth. Something angry looks for vengeance against those that betrayed him. From atop the stone ship, the Hulk clad in his gladiator armor smashes away any asteroids that come near with ease. Every punch he throws is fueled by his anger toward the Illuminati, a secret cabal of Earth's greatest heroes making decisions that affect the globe. This Illuminati is composed of Iron Man, Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Strange, and Black Bolt. This group had come to the agreement that Hulk was too dangerous to remain on Earth and must be exiled. Together, they tricked him into a spaceship and intended to take him to an uninhabited planet. However, the ship took him to the brutal planet of Sakaar instead, where he was enslaved and forced to fight in gladiator matches. Eventually, the Hulk befriended the other enslaved fighters. They became the Warbound and defeated the planet's ruler, the Red King. Hulk freed all those that had been enslaved and became the planet's new king. For the time, the Hulk found peace and love with a woman named Kyra who was pregnant with his child. That peace was destroyed when the warp core on Hulk's shuttle exploded. Not only was Kyra and her unborn child killed by the blast, but the entire capital city of Sakaar was also destroyed. Millions of innocents were murdered in the explosion. The Hulk survived the explosion and blamed the Illuminati for the tragedy. Together with this warbound, Hulk swore vengeance against the heroes of Earth. His first stop on his war campaign was Black Bolt at the Inhuman Settlement on the Moon. When the Hulk arrives, Black Bolt and his queen Medusa meet him just outside the castle wall. Medusa warns him that Black Bolt has defeated the Hulk in the past and is prepared to do it again. Undeterred by the threat, the Hulk charges at Black Bolt but is blasted back with a single whisper. Black Bolt and Medusa begin to walk back to the castle but the Hulk isn't done yet. He tells Black Bolt that he didn't come for a whisper, he wants to hear him scream. Back on Earth, government officials notice that a massive explosion has occurred on the moon and Earth's satellites have gone down. Tony Stark, the acting director of S.H.I.E.L.D., tries to warn the president that they have to make a move now but is already too late. The Hulk and his forces have arrived in New York City. The stone ship beams a hologram of the Hulk into Times Square. He tells the civilians that the Illuminati are to blame for the destruction he's about to unleash. All around the world, the Hulk plays a video detailing his time on Sakaar and how he lost everything. He introduces his warbound, Cork, Meek, Elo, Brood, and Hirom. The Hulk gives the people of New York City 24 hours to evacuate the city before his battle with the remaining members of the Illuminati. From his ship, the Hulk displays the battered and beaten body of Black Bolt as an example of what he'll do to the entire planet if the Illuminati do not reveal themselves. By the time the Hulk's presentation is finished, Iron Man is already in the air. He tries to take control of some of the satellites that were shut down by the Hulk. Unfortunately, the stone ship retakes control and shuts Iron Man out. While in space, Doctor Strange astral projects to Iron Man and tells him that his machines are useless against the Hulk. The Hulk is angrier than he's ever been, which means that he's also stronger than he's ever been. Iron Man proposes that Doctor Strange use his magic to send Hulk away again, but Strange refuses. He doesn't want the Hulk to destroy another world and possibly come back stronger. The two depart and prepare for the Hulk in their own ways. Shortly after, Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic meet with Robert Reynolds, the Sentry. The Sentry is a superhero with the power of a million exploding suns and is often considered the strongest person in the Marvel Universe. The only thing holding the Sentry back is his inability to fully control his powers. If he were to lose control for even a moment, thousands of innocents could be killed. Iron Man and Mr. Fantastic attempt to recruit the Sentry against the Hulk. In the past, the Sentry was able to calm the Hulk's anger and stop his rampages. Robert is hesitant to accept, but eventually decides to join them and turns into the Sentry. Back in New York, heroes like Spider-Man and She-Hulk evacuate the last of the civilians out of the city. Iron Man arrives in a new and improved Hulkbuster suit. At the same time, the Hulk descends from the stone ship. The two clash in the air, creating a shockwave that shatters glass and sends helicopters tumbling in the air. While they fight, Iron Man sends out a transmission confessing to firing the Hulk into space. Despite his mistakes, he's still determined to protect the people of Earth. Once they reach the ground, the Hulk charges at Iron Man, but Tony counters with a rocket-powered punch straight to the stomach. The hit sends the Hulk flying through several buildings and into a park outside the city. Iron Man tells the people of Earth that he plans to end the fight now because he knows that Bruce Banner would want it that way. He commands S.H.I.E.L.D. jets to fire multiple missiles at the Hulk. 
As he's engulfed in fire, the Hulk remembers his time with his wife and her death from the warp core explosion. Once the blast subsides, the Hulk is still standing in the crater and he's filled with rage. With a thunderous leap, the Hulk launches himself at Iron Man. The two of them crash into the Avengers Tower. While in the building, the Hulk rains down a series of powerful punches on Iron Man that are so powerful that they collapse the entire structure. As the rest of the heroes rush towards the wreckage, only the Hulk is left standing. He roars into the night with Iron Man's broken body lying behind him. But before we continue with World War Hulk, be sure to subscribe to the channel with notifications on to never miss an upload and smash that like button for some plot armor comics today. World War Hulk number 2 in a different section of New York, Iron Fist tells Echo, Ronan, and Doctor Strange that Iron Man has lost to the Hulk. Echo suggests that Doctor Strange should use his immense magical powers to simply kill the Hulk, but Strange refuses. Doing so would cost him his soul, and he believes that there is another way. Doctor Strange is in the middle of casting a spell that would let him find a hero that can both defeat the Hulk and redeem him at the same time. In order for the spell to work, the Hulk has to allow Strange in, but his hate is preventing that. In the heart of New York, street-level heroes like Spider-Man and Luke Cage prepare to take on the Hulk, but before the battle can begin, the Warbound show up and defend their king. She-Hulk, the cousin of Bruce Banner, attempts to talk things out before it's too late. The Hulk tells her to walk away, but She-Hulk and the rest of the heroes stand their ground. Before anyone can react, the Hulk rushes his cousin with a punch that sends her reeling. She-Hulk lands a solid hit, but the Hulk quickly and easily overpowers her. He viciously slams her to the ground, taking her out of the fight. Hulk and his warbound engage with the rest of the heroes. Spider-Woman is the first to realize they're outmatched. The Hulk is much stronger than he was before, and each of his warbound is about as powerful as he was originally. Miss Marvel points out that they don't have to win, they just have to buy enough time for Mr. Fantastic. At the Baxter building, the Fantastic Four, Storm, and Black Panther are all working on a device to take down the Hulk. The device is close to being finished, but before it's done, Reed tries to get everyone to leave before the Hulk arrives. They all refuse and explain that it'll take all of their combined strength to even stand a chance against the Hulk. In the distance, the Human Torch spots the Hulk and the Warbound approaching. Storm manages to stall the Hulk by throwing him into a building with a gust of wind. The heroes do their best to hold off the Warbound while Reed finishes his device. Storm and the Human Torch unleash their full power on the Hulk, completely eradicating a few of the surrounding buildings. Despite the damage to the area, the Hulk remains undefeated, dragging the Human Torch's body behind him. Seeing his friend in danger, the Thing jumps down to confront the Hulk. He lands a solid right hook on the Hulk, but he's unfazed. The remaining heroes and the Warbound watch as the two of the strongest people on Earth pummel one another. Eventually, the Hulk brings the Thing to his knees. He raises his fist to finish him off, but is interrupted by a bright golden light. The source of the light is the Sentry, who has finally arrived to end Hulk's rampage. The presence of the Sentry seems to put the Hulk in a trance. As the Sentry descends, he offers his hand and the Hulk takes it. Suddenly, he crushes the arm and reveals the truth. The Sentry has not yet arrived to save the day. The device that Reed was building was mimicking his powers in an attempt to trick the Hulk. Enraged by yet another betrayal, the Hulk tries to smash Reed's face but is stopped by one of the Invisible Woman's force fields. She does her best to convince the Hulk to stop, but he tells her that if the situation was flipped, she would never stop. With incredible strength, he manages to break her shield and finally get his hands on Mr. Fantastic. Mercilessly, the Hulk beats Reed into the ground, leaving him stretched out and defeated. The Invisible Woman calls the real Sentry and tells him that they have failed. He is their only hope of surviving the Hulk's wrath. In the streets of New York, a mob of civilians has formed in support of the Hulk. The Warbound and the Hulk have collected all the defeated heroes and brought them to the center of the city. Rick Jones, one of Bruce Banner's oldest friends, emerges from the mob. Rick tries to find common ground with the Hulk and it seems to be working until Doctor Strange interferes. This is the moment he's been waiting for, the moment when the Hulk would finally drop his guard and let him inside his mind. However, the Hulk's anger is far too strong for Strange to overcome. He manages to force the magician out of his mind and launches straight into another battle with more heroes led by Hercules. 
From a distance, S.H.I.E.L.D. agents observe the fight and hope that the heroes might win, but they've ordered a retreat. Over the comms, General Ross tells the agents that the heroes had their chance. He's arrived with the full force of the military. World War Hulk number 3 Soldiers inform General Ross that the Hulk has taken down the Avengers and the Fantastic Four. In addition to this, about a hundred civilians remain in the city and they are cheering on the Hulk's destruction. General Ross mentions how people never learn from the past. Every time the Hulk saves the Earth and is rewarded for his heroism, the next month he goes on another rampage. People always make excuses for the damage he's caused. General Ross is through making excuses now. If the Hulk plans on threatening the planet, then Ross has a reward of his own to give him. From across the horizon, General Ross and an army of helicopters fly towards the Hulk. Each one is firing a Gatling gun, shooting hundreds of adamantium bullets directly at the Hulk. On the ground, soldiers force Rick Jones away from the conflict. They continue to add to the firepower, causing noticeable damage to the Hulk. Back in his hideout, Doctor Strange has found his opening. General Ross's assault on the Hulk has forced the door open, allowing Strange inside his mind. Strange sees and experiences all the same things as the Hulk, who is in the middle of attacking the helicopters. He launches himself into the air and pulls one of them out of the sky. As both the Hulk and the helicopter crash into the ground, he receives a vision from Doctor Strange. Inside the Hulk's mind, he appears to be back on Sakaar with a projection of Doctor Strange talking to him. Strange tries to explain the situation to him, but the Hulk just tries to fight the projection. In the real world, the soldiers observe the Hulk punching the air wildly. General Ross calls in the full power of the military. Tanks and even more helicopters all fire upon the Hulk, who takes the attacks head on. Hulk does his best to try and force Strange out of his head, but nothing works. Strange reminds the Hulk that he is the Sorcerer Supreme and that he's capable of killing him with a single twitch of his finger. Despite his immense power, Strange is still Bruce's friend and doesn't want to hurt him. When he asks to see his true face, the Hulk accepts. For the first time in a long time, the Hulk is gone and only Bruce Banner remains. Bruce collapses to his knees while he remembers his life with Kyra on Sakaar. Doctor Strange tries to explain to Bruce that the Illuminati had nothing to do with the Warp Core explosion, but Bruce tells him to go away. Strange makes himself physical in Bruce's mind and tries to comfort his friend. Bruce takes hold of the magician's hands and suddenly transforms back into the Hulk. Without warning, he breaks both of Doctor Strange's hands, forcibly removing him from the Hulk's mind. Meanwhile, in the real world, the Warbound have surrounded the Hulk and are protecting him from the military's assault. Now that he's done with Doctor Strange, the Hulk is back in action and ready to fight. He jumps onto the tanks and easily starts tearing them apart. The Hulk hurls the cannon of one of the tanks at a helicopter, causing it to plummet to the ground. The soldiers on the ground fire at the Hulk with their weapons, but he drops them all with a single seismic clap. Only the helicopter that General Ross is in currently remains. He uses the minigun attachment to rain down bullets on the Hulk, but it's all useless. The Hulk leaps into the air and pulls Ross directly out of the helicopter. As the two of them fall, Ross pulls out a handgun and fires directly into the Hulk's face. He tells the Hulk that no matter what he does, they'll continue to come after him until they finally manage to kill him. General Ross and the Hulk ultimately collide with the ground with a resounding boom. At the White House, Maria Hill of S.H.I.E.L.D. informs the President that General Ross has failed and that there is only one option left. Nuclear weapons would only make the Hulk stronger from the radiation he would absorb. Their only hope of stopping the Hulk is now the Sentry. In order to convince the Sentry to help, a script has been prepared for the President to read. The Sentry suffers from agoraphobia and schizophrenia. This makes him terrified of himself and going into the outside world. As the President reads from the script, we see Doctor Strange and Wong attempting to heal his hands. The defeated heroes have all been placed in cages. The President becomes frustrated that the Sentry is not responding to him, so he starts to go off script. He starts insulting the Sentry, but still doesn't react. The President ends the call by acknowledging that they're all screwed. Back in New York, the night has finally ended and the Hulk's army has captured all of the military, including General Ross. At Madison Square Garden, the Hulk and Korg have a conversation. Korg notes that the Illuminati deserve whatever pain and suffering is coming their way, but the Hulk still has the option of stopping now. Everyone on Earth knows that the Illuminati are the real monsters now. Hulk's only response is to open up the stadium and show Korg the civilians cheering for him. He tells Korg that the people understand. Never stop making them pay.
In a different part of the city, Rick Jones tries to warn Doctor Strange that the Hulk is coming, but Ello and Hirom find him. Hirom realizes that Strange's hideout is warded with magic that disguises it with illusions. As he removes the illusions, Iron Fist, Ronin, and Echo charge out to fight the members of the Warbound. The heroes put up a good fight, but the Warbound easily overpower them. Ello implants obedience discs inside the defeated heroes and marches them back to the arena. Hirom stays behind to collect Doctor Strange. Rick tries to convince Hirom that what they're doing is wrong. Hirom admits that their actions are evil and that the Warbound will have to pay for their rage later. But the people of Earth will pay for theirs first. Hirom uses his Shadow Priest magic to burn through the spells protecting Doctor Strange and Wong inside their hideout. Doctor Strange warns Wong that they don't have time to heal his hands. Without the use of his hands, Strange has no means of stopping Hirom, let alone dealing with the Hulk. Strange is becoming desperate and asks Wong for their last resort. From inside a special box, Doctor Strange retrieves a magic potion. As he drinks the potion, he commands a being named Zom to live once more. Just as he finishes consuming the potion, Hurom finds him. Back in Madison Square Garden, a throne made of debris and rubble has been erected for the Hulk. From his throne, Hulk watches as Rick and his ally Meek argue over the morality of Hulk's actions. Meek ends by explaining that the Warbound are simply doing what they're made for and that the Hulk is the World Breaker. At that moment, Hurom is thrown into the arena bruised and beaten. Suddenly, a demonic version of Doctor Strange appears. He towers over the Hulk and is practically bursting with magical power. His broken hands have been replaced with spike maces. This new Doctor Strange only wants to do one thing. Smash. World War Hulk number 4 Inside a helicopter flying over Madison Square Garden, the President watches the battle between Doctor Strange and the Hulk. An aide informs the President that Strange is channeling the powers of an extra-dimensional demon called Zom. New York has become hell on Earth. Doctor Strange attempts to crush Hirom, but he jumps out of the way at the very last moment. Hirom attempts to fight off Strange once again while telling him that he's lost control of the demon possessing him. In his attempt to save the people of Earth from the Hulk, Strange might have turned himself into the very thing that destroys them. The spikes on Strange's hand stab Hirom through his arms, allowing him to strike. As Hirom goes down, the rest of the Warbound join the fight. None of them can land a hit on Strange, including the Hulk. Strange pierces Hulk through the stomach and uppercuts him straight through the arena. The Hulk lands next to a group of civilians, arguing with the police and firefighters. He's not even given a moment of rest when Strange is on him once again. A barrage of attacks is unleashed on the Hulk, who can only lie there and take the abuse. Strange kicks his enemy into a building, causing a portion of the wall to collapse on top of the civilians. This causes Strange to snap out of his trance and regain control of his body. He quickly starts to remove the rubble and reveals that the Hulk protected the people from harm. Strange apologizes for the danger he put them in. The anger and power coursing through him are almost impossible for him to control. The Hulk decides to give Strange a lesson on anger. With a single punch, he launches Strange straight into a car and into another building. The Hulk dishes out a flurry of punches on the magician that is only stopped by Rick's interference. Rick points out that Hulk was acting like a hero when he saved those people and that he is still Bruce Banner deep inside. The Hulk stares at Rick for a moment before punching Strange in the face one more time and throwing him to Meek. He tells Rick that Hulk isn't Banner, but that Banner is the Hulk. Meek implants an obedience disc on Strange and drags him back to Madison Square Garden. In the arena, all of the captured heroes have been implanted with obedience discs, preventing them from helping the Illuminati. Reed tries to explain once again that they are not responsible for the Warp Core explosion, but is interrupted by Illo triggering the disc. Different civilians step onto the stage and talk about how each of the Illuminati was responsible for the deaths of their loved ones. The Illuminati are forced to listen and aren't allowed to explain themselves or prove their innocence. The Hulk unleashes a horrific monster from Sakaar and forces the Illuminati to fight for their lives. They've all been weakened in some way, making the fight much harder than it would be normally. The obedience disc is preventing Tony from summoning his armor. Doctor Strange's broken hands prevent him from casting spells. Black Bolt's mouth is covered and Mr. Fantastic is heavily injured from his fight with the Hulk. Despite their weakened state, the four heroes work together and manage to slay the beast without losing their lives. Even though they've won against the monster, their fight isn't over yet. 
The Hulk explains how he was forced to fight and kill other slaves while in Sakaar. Now the Illuminati are going to be made to do the same. Elo uses the obedience discs to force the Illuminati to pick up their weapons and fight one another. They try to resist, but Hiron points out that even the Silver Surfer wasn't able to fight off the obedience disc. In Vermont, the military surrounds the home of the Sentry, trying to come up with a plan to convince him to help. For the past 29 hours, he's done nothing but stand in the doorway of his house. While the president and military discuss options, the Sentry remembers his previous conversation with Iron Man. The Sentry explains to Tony that he's too scared to fight the Hulk. If he were to lose control of his powers for even a millisecond while fighting the Hulk, hundreds of people could die. Tony admits that he's scared too, but sometimes when the stakes are high, it's better to do something rather than nothing. He ends by telling the Sentry that it's time to play God. Back in the arena, the Illuminati are still fighting one another to the death. Doctor Strange sets both himself and Black Bolt on fire. Mr. Fantastic attacks Tony with a mace, but he only blocks and bides his time. Tony uses his powers to take control of one of the Death's Head's guards and fires a blast at the Hulk. Unfortunately, Hulk dodges it effortlessly and Elo regains control of the robot. Mr. Fantastic finally gets through Tony's shield and knocks him out. Reed is forced to lift his mace and prepare to finish Tony off. Everyone in the crowd waits for Hulk's decision. Thumbs up, Tony gets to live. Thumbs down, he dies. The anticipation builds until the Hulk finally decides. Thumbs down. At the same time, the Sentry finally decides to act. As he flies off, he says that it's time to play God. World War Hulk number 5 The remaining Fantastic Four scream for the Hulk to stop before things get out of hand, but he refuses. With everything he has, Reed tries to stop himself from killing Tony, but the Obedience Disc is starting to overpower him. The Hulk reminds Reed that he's already killed one world. Why stop now? Eventually, the disc wins out and Reed brings the mace down. As the dust clears, it's revealed that the mace smashed into the ground instead of Tony's head. At first, Reed thinks that Tony was able to hack the disc, but it was actually the Hulk. Meek wonders why the Hulk allowed the Illuminati to live. He explains that they came for justice, not murder. The Hulk and his Warbound have yet to kill a single person on Earth, and they don't plan to. Their only goal was to make sure that the people of Earth would never forget what the Illuminati really are. Liars, traitors, and killers. Hulk reveals that the last part of his plan is to level the entire city before leaving the planet. Tony warns him that this is the Hulk's last chance to surrender. Without warning, the stone ship explodes and crashes into the arena. From the rubble, the sentry erupts and greets his old friend. With a single blast of his incredible power, he destroys Madison Square Garden and several other buildings too. Hulk and some of his warbound are caught in the blast and are launched clear of the arena. As the Hulk pulls himself from the debris, he asks if the sentry truly wants this fight. The sentry tells him that he does because the Hulk is the only person that can hit with his full power. With an explosive uppercut, the Sentry sends the Hulk into the air and through a couple of buildings. Back in Madison Square Garden, the Thing, Korg, and Mr. Fantastic hold up the ceiling, preventing it from crushing the people inside. The Hulk tells all of them that whatever happens next is on their heads. The Sentry and the Hulk collide and produce a shockwave that obliterates the building they're inside. Every punch that the Hulk lands on the Sentry only seems to make him happier. When the Sentry finally unleashes his own assault, the excess energy destroys multiple city blocks. Both the heroes and the Warbound realize that the Sentry has lost control of his powers. Even if he's unable to kill the Hulk, most likely he'll still kill everything else on the planet. The Hulk comes rocketing back into the remains of the arena engulfed in a fireball. The Sentry floats above him, surrounding himself in a massive firestorm. Hirom and Korg attempt to help the Hulk, but they're useless against his powers. Reed tells Tony that with the stone ship down, he should be able to access the satellites again. The Warbound helps protect the heroes against the Sentry's power. They claim that they didn't come here to watch another world die. Within the firestorm, the Hulk takes a hold of Sentry's energy and leaps into the air to meet him. The Sentry asks him if it always felt good when he finally let go. Hulk takes the full brunt of each of the Sentry's attacks without backing down, even as his armor is ripped from his body. The Sentry mentions how funny it is after years of stopping the Hulk's rampages, it's him that can't stop now. As they struggle against one another, the firestorm continues to expand and consume more of the city. 
The Hulk starts to absorb the Sentry's energy and grows more powerful. He tells him that it doesn't matter what the people call him, it only matters what you choose. Both godlike beings strike each other and create an explosion bright enough to outshine the sun. As the blast subsides, the Hulk reverts to Bruce Banner and the Sentry turns back into Robert Reynolds. Both men are bruised and bloody, but in the end, Robert thanks Bruce and then falls unconscious. As the heroes approach Bruce, he offers his hand to Rick Jones, who gladly welcomes him home. Meek suddenly rushes forward with a spear shouting for the Hulk to come back. Rick pushes Bruce out of the way and is run through with Meek's spear. Bruce races toward Rick and sees him bleeding out on the floor. Meek can only see the anger building in Bruce and cheers with excitement. He gets his wish as the Hulk returns and sends Meek flying. Korg and Hirom try to hold him back and remind him that the Warbounds stand together, but they're no match for his strength. With savage aggression, the Hulk stomps on Meek's body and starts to rip apart his exoskeleton. Even as he's being beaten to death, Meek tells the Hulk not to stop. Ultimately, he reveals the truth about what happened on Sakaar. Meek noticed that the Hulk had forgotten his rage and hate when he fell in love with his wife. Instead of slaughtering the Red King's soldiers when Hulk became king, he tried to achieve peace. The Red King's former soldiers attempted to kill the Hulk by loading a faulty warp core into his shuttle. Meek saw this and allowed it to happen because he knew that it would remind Hulk of his anger. This revelation is enough to even make Brood lash out at Meek. A million children and other innocents were murdered all because Meek wanted to bring out the World Breaker. Meek's insane plot worked because this news pushed the Hulk past the breaking point. Waves of gamma radiation come flying out of his body. The buildings all throughout New York begin to crumble. He swears to hate the Illuminati forever because they started all of this. Even though he hates the heroes with everything he has, the Hulk hates himself more. Each step that he takes creates massive earthquakes that rock the entire eastern seaboard. The Hulk has reached a point where he could potentially destroy the planet. Even though he wants to, he can't control his rage any longer. He begs the heroes to stop him before he breaks the world. Tony finally regains control of the satellites and uses them to target an orbital strike directly on the Hulk. The strike hits and generates even more power than the Hulk's fight with the Sentry. As the Hulk endures the full force of the orbital strike, he is once again reminded of his last moments with his wife. When the blast finally ends, the Hulk is gone and only Bruce Banner remains. He is alive but no longer has the energy or will to fight. All his anger had been depleted and now what remains is only grief. Without complaint, Bruce is sealed inside a metal coffin and shipped off by S.H.I.E.L.D. The Warbound are also arrested as Robert receives medical attention for his injuries. The Illuminati stand alone, filled with shame for the destruction that they are responsible for. Bruce is moved to a secret underground prison in the Mojave Desert. Now that he's alone, he can finally rest. The World Breaker's rampage has ended, but on Sakaar, in the toxic wasteland, something is born and it carries the Hulk's rage. But that, dear viewer, is a story for another time. Well, that's the end of the World War Hulk storyline. Is this the strongest that the Hulk's ever been? Let us know in the comments. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching to the very end, and until next time, stay with me, folks. Keep that plot armor on you. I've been Morse Code, and we'll see you in the next one.